So here we have the abstract data ADE33 event boss. Let's check out what's to come in the video before we go through the features and get into the patches. Now the ADE33 event boss is a rhythm and pattern creation and manipulation device. You can put clocks into it and get new patterns, or you can put random gates or already pattern rhythmic things, gates, triggers, events, put them in and get further variations on these patterns. It has various global modes, of which there are six. You press these two buttons, and the slow flash tells us which global mode we're in. And we've got the first mode, which is variations. We've then got multiplications and divisions, logic, phase, gates, and probability between the rest of them. Each global mode then has six local modes. In the logic mode, for example, that will change between AND, OR, XOR, NOR, NAND, various gate types. With variations, it will skip, say, every third beat, depending on the input voltage, or skip every three beats collectively. The multiplier and divider mode will then have local modes for different multiplication or division at various number ratios. We've got two inputs, input A and input A2, A1 and A2. We can flick between these. A nice trick that I do in the video is to not have anything patched to A2. So when A has a function performed to it, dependent on the voltage at B, given as an output, we simply mute it by going to A2 when nothing's plugged in. But that also works great in, say, the logic mode, where you've got a logic function between input A and B, but you actually want to be able to manipulate this logic by changing the input. Now, with CV, or the button, you can do that. There's a lot of potential in this module. You can get into what these logic gates are, really get deep and learn it if you wish, but it's instantly very musical and rewarding. Everything's in sync because it's event-based. What comes in is effectively what comes out in some variation. It's very musical. It's like having another little band member that's really well behaved and they do exactly kind of what you tell them to do. So let's just dive in some examples. We're going to stick at this being fun, quick and musical. And you can, of course, dive further and check out the manual if you wish to do so. So let's get stuck in some patches. And we're in global mode one, variables. And before I get into the nitty gritty of what's happening, let's just play around and show how musical this is. The hi-hat pattern you can hear, playing 16th notes, is also the same clock, this green trace, that's going into the A input on the event boss. I'm using a voltage, the yellow trace, so I turn that up and down. And that's coming from a voltage source off screen. That's going to influence this algorithm. The output is the blue trace. And let's just play around. Changing the local modes. CV over the local modes. So it's very musical very quickly. We have two A inputs that we can select between. But I don't have a second A input. And I'm doing that because it allows me simply to mute the pattern. Clock's going in. The variables, if I change the voltage, is doing something, varying that rhythm. But if I go to the input that isn't active, A2, I get a mute, a simple on and off. Really useful. So the first local mode in global mode one will let every number of events pass. And if I keep the same voltage and just move through them, the second local mode blocks every nth. You set the number with this voltage. It blocks every one of those coming through. Mode three only lets n number of the events pass to the output. 
far blocks all n of the eight input events. And then five and six toggle between the other modes. And the manual tells you exactly what's going on. That's where those graphics were from that I overlaid. But simply, if we just change the voltage, which we can do live in a performance situation, again, this yellow trace, we can live perform rhythmic changes. We could swap that over to be a varying voltage, say a sample and hold from the octal controller. Let's go back to local mode one. So we're now in global mode two, which is multiples. And these are multipliers and dividers in various combinations across the local modes of the incoming event. Now to keep it simple, my event is still this green trace, steady, simple 16th note clock relative to the bass drum. I have a pitch sequence going to an oscillator and the oscillator going to a low pass gate, which is just a steady 16th note pattern playing round and round. However, by decoupling the rhythm of this melodic pattern and using the event boss to control it, we can get more exciting, variable, musical, performable results. Now this first local mode is a divider and depending on the voltage coming in, again indicated by this yellow trace on data, it will divide the number of events by one, two, three, four or five. So let's turn up the voltage and hear this pattern divide. So we can see it's now divided by two. Divided by three, giving us a dotted eighth note rhythm. Divide four. And divide five. So by varying this voltage, and I'm going to do this manually with my offset control just off screen, and you'll see that yellow trace wiggle around, we get some nice interesting divisions of the incoming events, which is our steady clock. Going into local mode two, instead of a divider, that's a multiplier. So as I increase this voltage, it will multiply the incoming events. Now 30 second notes, because it's a 16th note clock going in. So again, by varying this voltage, Sample and hold from the octo controller would be great for that. Get some really nice bursts and ratchets. And local modes three, four and five offer us various combinations, again, of multiplication and division. With rather than going one, two, three or five, we might have a divide by one, two, four, six, eight, multiply one, two, four, six, eight, one, three, six, nine, twelve, and so on. So let's go to the other local modes and check out some of the other dividing and multiplying factors. And again, like the previous example, I've only got one gate to the A input, simply so I've got a performable mute on and off to stop this stream of gates passing through to my low pass gate. CV over mode works just as well as it did with the variables global mode one. So steady voltage to influence what's happening, but I'm controlling the local modes, moving between various divisors and multipliers. And whatever you throw at it, me randomly wiggling on offset into that, or just sample and hold, we're getting musical ratchets, bursts and divisions. So this patch is in stereo with two parts panned hard left and right. So make sure you've got headphones on or some decent speakers. Now these two sounds, this one panned left, 
is simply an oscillator through a filter with that filter opening dependent on this gate pattern. And this is going into A input one. You can see it holds and it's got a sustain. You can hear that note sustain. This pattern panned right is simply a short trigger. The blue trace on data just triggering a little rim shot sound. So they're just there to kind of indicate what's going on. And this is my output panned down the middle. And we're in global mode three here, which is probability based modes. A1 is selected, so that's what's passing down to the output and affected by the internal algorithm. And I wanted to use this input, again this one, because it's already a pattern. The event boss is great at working with clocks, but it also takes patterns and gives new variations upon patterns. It doesn't have to work with a clock. It's not a synced event that needs clocking, hence putting the gate rhythm in to demonstrate that. So dependent on the voltage at the B input, this is either going to let these pass through or not. The probability that any given event will pass through. So that's effectively off with zero volts coming in. Turning that up slightly. And notice the probability keeps the gate length. When it is on, it follows that green trace, A input 1. If I swap over to A input 2, it lets the event pass through. It's now a trigger, but with the probability by the event boss affecting how many of them pass through. So this is great because it allows me to use probability to reduce the busyness and density of a pattern with an external voltage, but it also lets me move between a gate pattern with sustain and varying rhythm and a straight 16th note trigger my clock. Put in my references again, the hard right rim shot for the clock and this other sound hard left to show us this rhythm. The various local modes give us different things again, all very musical. Local mode 1 is the percentage chance the event will pass. Mode 2 is the percentage chance it will block. So kind of the opposite. A high voltage blocks everything, a lower voltage is going to let it pass through. Local mode 3 is a percentage chance that the input event will be tied to the next input event. So let's go to the triggers and show that. voltage is determining the percentage probability that these triggers will tie together. And we can see and hear that with a sustained period it's firing in to its output. And a high voltage will just tie everything together. Low voltage no ties. So this is a great way to work with bass lines when you want to inject some life and funk and some sustain into an otherwise static rhythmic pattern. Local mode 4 is again tying things together, but only the notes it ties together will pass. So for low voltage, nothing passes. High voltage, it's all tied together. So unlike mode 3, that has the triggers passing between them, this injects kind of moments of silence, inactivity between the ties. Mode 5 is a flip-flop, a coin toss that the output will happen or not. Mode 6 is an inverted flip-flop. Now you don't have to understand what a flip-flop is or probability or any of the terminology, just know that you can carve out patterns and variations on patterns from patterns or clocks. They can follow an input gate, they can, they can tie triggers together. It's a very musical mode, as are all of them. Now global mode 4 is all about logic. Now this is in stereo again, I've got sounds hard left and right to demonstrate the two inputs. Input B for this mode actually becomes the secondary logic function. 
I currently don't need this one. We'll come back to that. So we have the two logic inputs, a logic function internally and an output. And we really don't need to understand logic or using maths to make rhythms for this to be fun and creative. Now these two sounds demonstrate the inputs. The rim shot to the right is this blue trace and the snare to the left is the green trace. And these are going to work against each other on the A and B inputs through the logic function to create a new rhythm, which is going to be this bass sound. And the first local mode is a logic and gate. And I'll put some images on screen for what these logic modes are. This isn't going to be a lesson in what Boolean logic is, because we just want to keep musical, fun and creative, and kind of fly through lots of different rhythms. Have a kick and a hi-hat just to kind of set the pace. And because these have a sustain period, these work quite nicely against each other. If we were to add a sharp trigger, which is my 16th note clock, these two stages are only going to be active at the same time when the sharp trigger, now at this input, that's currently not on screen, is active. So we just get little spikes of my bass sound. Different type of logic gate, a NAND gate on local mode 2. Nice long sustain note there. But again, we can flick over to the second A input. So the two A inputs here work like having a switch. We can have this one or this one performing a logic function against the B input. Local mode 3 is an OR gate. This means that any time any input is high, it's going to let that event pass through. Local mode 4 is a NOR gate. An XOR gate on local mode 5. And an XOR is going to play when one or the other is active, but when both inputs are active together, you won't get anything. So again, a different bass line, a different rhythm. And we've got an X NOR gate on six. So it's effectively two rhythms in for two drum sounds, panned hard left and right, merging them within some logic. And it's a rhythm generator for my bass line. Super simple, all musical, all in sync, all in time, really fun. So holding down the two buttons, the slower blinking LED shows us we're in global mode five. And this is a phase control mode. And local mode one gives us a quantized shift. It phase shifts an input event by a subdivision of its own tempo. So this patch is in stereo, panned hard left and right, it's the exact same pitch sequence into one single oscillator split to two low pass gates and the output of those low pass gates are panned hard left and hard right. Now the hard left signal is being triggered by my clock and that's what's going into the event boss at the A input. The output of the event boss is triggering the right hand side. So when I add a voltage to the B input, which is shown by this yellow trace, this is gonna phase shift that right hand side. So again, make sure you've got headphones or some good speakers on. So let's hear that phase shift. And the voltage I'm using to make the phase shift is also changing the tone of my oscillator. Now 
Now, as with the other modes, we've got six different local modes. Local mode two is a percentage shift. Local mode three is a short shift going from naught to 1,600 milliseconds. Mode four is a long shift going up to 4,800 milliseconds. Mode five adjusts the marked space ratio of an input event, which becomes a subdivision ratio of its tempo. And the end result of that is effectively longer gates. The other modes, For this particular patch will sound very similar. Mode 6 also adjusts the mark to space ratio, but to a percentage as opposed to a quantized value. Which is really useful for making gates longer and last between a percentage or a quantized amount of time between two events. So here's the same patch as the previous global mode, which is mode 5, phase, and we're now in global mode 6 gates and the gates mode allows you to take event signals at gates and triggers and extend their length join multiple events together to form different length gates and events from the inputs my input is a trigger and just like the last part of the video the left hand side is just triggered by the input trigger to input a but the output of the event boss controls the sound on my right hand side and in this first local mode the amount of cv into b sets how long the output stays high for how many number of events, so how many clock pulses in this case. So let's increase the voltage. So that's two. Three. So it goes high for any number of events. Two clock pulses, three clock pulses, four, five, seven, up to eight, and then drops down just for one. The second local mode, the output stays high for any given number of events, but then stays low for the same number of events. So that's high for two, low for two. First mode, high for two, but just low for one. Mode 3 is a logic pass, and when the signal goes high, it will let the event pass through. It's quite nice to be able to use LFOs, envelopes, random sources to let the sound through or not. Mode 4 is a logic hold. So nothing passes, but when the input's high, it holds. So this is almost like a comparator creating a gate of a given length depending on the input. Mode 5 toggles between local mode 1 and 2. So let's do this and make it toggle. So now when I go down and back up again in voltage, it will have toggled modes. And mode 6 does the same, but toggles between local mode 3 and 4. So that's it for the event boss. The manual goes through changing button behaviour and other things as well, but it's just very musical. It's like a little rhythm partner. It's like a great little jam band member that does as it's told, but be it for probability or phase or varying rhythms, multiplication, logic, division, a whole number of things. It pairs really well with the octal controller and having an offset and mix control like the abstract data mix utility is great for being able to add these voltages and manually play and manipulate what happens live almost like nudging the bass player with your elbow to tell him to move on and do something else be sure to check out other future music magazine videos on this channel cheers for watching